Hello and welcome back. This is uh, week 11, assignment 10. And in this assignment, we're going to take some live video footage and we're going to composite an object going through it uh, <clears throat> while using what's called a, a Luma track mat. And I'll show you what that is as we go through. But first, I'm going to build an object that I can use to go through my scene. So I'm going to go into Photoshop here. I'm going to do just a 640 by 480 at 300 pixel resolution. Hit create. And uh, I'm just going to build a little spaceship here. So here's my layers window. I'm going to click plus here on the bottom of my layers window to create a new layer. Just build a typical spaceship here. So let's grab the paint can here. Fill that in. And let's do, let's click another layer and we'll put a another piece on here. I'm going to make this really simple for our purposes so we can move on here. So in this layer, I'm going to just make a circle here. Maybe about like that. And let's make this uh, maybe some kind of red. That looks good. Okay, and then what we can also do is duplicate. Let's duplicate that layer. So right click on it, choose duplicate layer. And let's fill that in with black again. And then if you watch, I can do something kind of cool here. I can go up to Select, Modify, Contract. Let's contract it by, let's try seven pixels maybe. And there it contracts the selection. And now if I hit Delete, then the red will show through with the black. Deselect that there. And then uh, let's take this top layer again and we'll duplicate that. Click OK, and then we'll change that color to kind of a white or maybe an off-white. Something a little bit darker. And then fill that in. And then what we can do is go up to Control-T and make this smaller. All I want to do is make, the, uh, make it smaller vertically. So hold down Shift. Holding down Shift and drag your point. It'll only drag the vertical down. And now I can bring this up, and then it kind of provides a nice edge there. So that's my basic spaceship there. It's pretty, pretty basic, nothing too complicated here. And then now what I'll do is I'll turn the eyeball off on the background layer, and I'm going to export this out as a PNG. So export as. Make sure PNG is your format here. 640 by 480. That's it. Click export. We'll call this demo spaceship. And PNG. And I'm saving it in my 10 folder here. Okay. And then if you want, you can also save the Photoshop file. Five file save. You can save it on your computer. Again, demo spaceship is probably going to work just fine. And make sure type is Photoshop there. Click Save. OK. OK, and then the next part of the video, I'll show you how to isolate some buildings from the rest of the background. And we're going to use, we're going to composite those buildings into our, uh, our project. Okay, welcome back. So we're going to go into Photoshop again. And this time we're going to uh, mask out a background. So all, all we have left standing are a few buildings that I want to use. So we're basically going to create a uh, and apply a layer mask here. So first things first, we'll go into Photoshop. 
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do a new file. Same one, 640 by 480, 300 pixels per inch. So now what we want to do is get a photograph in here. Let's see if I can just drag it in. Um, this one's probably going to be larger than my canvas here. But let's let, let that stop us here. Perfect. Okay, so there it is. Um, so we've got image size here again. 1280 by 670. It's bigger than our canvas there. Click OK. And so we don't have that in our uh, file yet. So what, let's separate these. And let's see if we can just grab this and drop it right on the canvas. There we go. So now I can close this. And so now we have some buildings here that I want to try to keep some of them so let me let's make this image smaller though and how we do that is let's zoom out and then control t to transform it and then we can just grab a corner there and drop that thing down to whatever we would like to see there that's probably good there i'm going to hit enter and then just move it over and now we have it within our 640 by 480 Okay, so we're going to keep those three buildings in the center. So what I want to do, though, for this purpose is I want to make a copy of this image. So I'm going to go ahead and right-click on it and do Duplicate Layer. And I'm going to call this uh, Mask Image. Okay, and call this one Original. good idea to name your layer so you know what's what and on the mask image again we're gonna to, to mask something we have to create we have to think in values of lights and darks so on this one we're gonna make this a um, we're gonna make this a black and white image so I'm gonna go up to image adjustments hue saturation we're gonna pull out the color on this and then we can also adjust the lightness too that'll make things a little bit easier Click OK, and then we'll also maybe adjust the contrast. So image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. Let's click OK. Actually, let's, let's, we can adjust that a little bit. Oh yeah, that's a lot better. So the more contrast we have between the buildings and the surroundings, the better. So that's probably good right there. Let's click OK. And uh, we're going to keep these three buildings. So another thing we can try is to go to um, invert. Perfect. So, so the logic here is this. We invert the image we want to keep <clears throat> because... Um, we are, we're dealing with whites here. So the white areas are the areas that we're going to keep and the dark areas we're going to, uh, it's going to mask out those areas. In this case, now I can probably go up here to adjustments again and do brightness contrast again and really emphasize or de-emphasize the contrast um, between the buildings and then maybe even knock the brightness down so I can see it a little better. That works. Let's click OK. Now we can zoom in. And I'm going to grab my uh, polygonal lasso tool here. And I'm just going to draw a border around the building that I want to keep. So I'm just going to grab, I'll just start here. And you just have, once you start this, you have to keep going. So click every once in a while and then take your hand off the mouse button and take your time. Okay, and it's this works real well when you choose something here with straight lines like a building or a skyscraper, you know, something like that. And again, my advice would be not to hurry. Just take your time. And I think it'll work out nicely for you.
Okay. Perfect. And we're going to go, actually, we need to go a little further than that. There we go. We're going to go down here. Click in there. And then notice here, when I drag off the screen, it'll, it'll keep moving for us so we can see where we're going. And so I want to go to about right here, it looks like. Um, it's hard to tell where that building ends. Well, we can just cut it off. Let's do this, then we'll come down here. We're just going to go all the way down to the bottom here. I think that'll be fine. And then all the way across to where we started. And then you get the marching ants there, and that's what you want. So you want that area to be selected. And so now what we're going to do is, since we have that area selected, we're just going to fill that in with white color. Um, that's the area that is going to show up. So we're going to use the brush tool, and white is our foreground. And you can bump up the brush as high as you want because you have that whole border area selected. You're not going to go outside of that border at this point. Okay, so we're going to fill that in. With uh, just the white paint here. Okay. I'm going to do the rest here. All right, so that's good there. Just make sure you fill it all in. And now what we're going to do is, with that selection, we're going to invert it and select everything outside of that now. So we're going to go up to select, choose inverse, and with inverse now we're going to color all of that black so it'll mask it all out when we apply the mask. Okay? So again, the, the areas that are filled in with white will um, show through on the canvas. The areas we fill in with black will be masked out. And this is also... The same principle with luma matting that we'll get to later in the video. Okay. Make sure you get all of it so you can mask everything out. Otherwise, something will show up that you don't want to show up. That looks good. And then the rest of this is right here. And so it looks like there, we're pretty good there. Um, and I think that's it. So now we can zoom out and take a look at it before we deselect anything. That looks good there. So Control D. And so looking at our layers, we've got a mass image, mask image here over our original. Okay, so once you make your uh, mask image and you've got your original underneath, Basically, here's how you do it. You go up to the mask image that you created, and you select the area, the white area that you're going to keep, okay? You select that, and then you go to the original. And then on the bottom of the layers window, click on, the again, the cube with the uh, sphere in the middle. That's when you add a layer mask. And notice there, once I selected that area, it just added it in automatically down here. On this layer, when I clicked, add a layer mask. Here, I'll do it again. Again, you go to your mask image that you created. You grab your magic wand tool and select the area that you want to uh, preserve. Then you go to the layer where you want to apply it. Click the box down below. It's, it's add a layer mask box. And notice there it applied it. So now when I turn off the mask image above it, you'll see that that image or that mask now is being applied to these buildings. And now I have only the three buildings preserved that I wanted to keep. So that's once that's done, now I can save this out again. So I'm going to go up to uh, File, Export, Export As. 
And again, PNG, because we don't want to keep anything in, there's no background and we want it that way. 640 by 480 is good. We're going to click export. We'll call this demo buildings. Save it in the same folder as a PNG. And that's all you have to do for that. We'll save this out too. On the computer, again, it's redundant there, demo buildings, and we'll click save. Okay, the next part of the video will bring everything together and I'll show you how to apply a Luma track mat that'll allow you to composite in an object into your scene effectively. Okay, now we're going to go into um, After Effects here. And we're going to start a new project. Again, composition. Let's check our settings here. New composition or control N. We're going to do 640 by 480 as per the assignment requirement. Okay, and then frame rate is 15 frames per second. And then we're going to do a 10 second video I'm gonna say I'm gonna do 30 seconds to start just because my video clips a little bit longer so I'm gonna click OK and um, then I, what I need to do is bring my video clip in so I'm gonna go over to um, iCloud here and download it from because I shot it on my iPhone so I'll be right back okay I'm back so I got the video downloaded and uh, let's go ahead and bring that in. So file, import, file. And here it is here. I didn't know what to film, so I just filmed a, uh, a little water tower near where I live. So, and notice there it's massive compared to the 640 by 480. So we'll have to resize that. So let me grab my magnifying glass here. Hold down Alt to zoom out. And then... Uh, Let's grab our selection tool here and we can reduce this quite a bit here let's do something like that just keep it real simple hit enter there and then now here's the live live action you can see the camera's a little shaky almost looks like a photo but it's actually a live action clip and uh you know going through it let's see if we can see any birds or anything going through i don't see anything Okay, so it's pretty straightforward footage here, so I'm just going to keep 10 seconds of it, let's say. So I'm going to split it here, so shift Control D, delete the beginning there, and then just keep from 5 to 15 seconds or so of it. There it is. I'm just going to say, what happened to it? <laughs> so I'll keep a little bit more of it just in case. So let's split it again. shift Control D. Or you can go up to edit here, split layer, and then we'll just delete the rest. So basically we only need about 10 seconds of this. So we'll just keep that. All right, so now what we're going to do, let's zoom back in here a little bit. And let's take a look here. Let's see. Composition settings here. 640 by 480. And let's check our size of our video here. Not sure what's going on there. But we want to cut. Okay, I guess we're good there. We just want to make sure we go. There we go. That's good right there. Actually, let's do a little bit more. All right, so there's our live clip. There's not much happening in it, but it is a video clip. You can kind of hear the noise, the wind there. And then it just kind of cuts off. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to save a still frame of this. I'll show you why. So maybe that one right there. We're going to save this as a still frame. So here's how you do it. 
um, you want to go up to composition. Again, we're just saving this one frame. Composition, we're going to choose save frame as, choose file. Go ahead and name it whatever you want. I'll just call this track mat uh, photo. It's the photo I'm going to use to make my track mat. And let's go ahead and save it to our AE10 folder and save as type. Just leave it as Photoshop for now. Okay, PSD, that's all you have as a choice. Click Save. And what it'll do is it'll bring you down to the render menu down here. So where it says Output Module on the bottom there, where it says Photoshop, click on that. And you, now you can change this to other formats. So instead of a Photoshop sequence, I just want to save it as a JPEG sequence. Um, and essentially, I'm just saving that one frame as a JPEG. So don't worry about the word sequence. Just choose JPEG sequence if you want to save it out as a JPEG. Click OK. And then output to this is where you'll tell it where to save it. Again, we're going to my AE10 menu. We're calling it track mat photo JPEG. Click Save. The last step is to hit the render button down here. I forgot about that. So we're going to go ahead and click render. So don't forget to click render button. And once that's done, it should be in your folder where you specified. You have to click the render button. And there it is. Okay, so there it saved our photo there. So, so in the next sequence, I'll show you guys how to... Um, create your uh, track map, and then how to apply it in After Effects and why you're applying it. Okay, um, I'm back here. And so next we're gonna use this track map photo that I saved, and we're gonna make a uh, mask, so to speak, for that to apply our track map. So we're gonna take this into Photoshop, so I'm just gonna right click it and check the properties here real quick. I believe it should be 640 by 480. Yeah, so we're good there. So let's go ahead and just right click on it and we'll just open it with Photoshop. Okay. And so kind of like when we apply a, uh, a mask filter to something to mask out certain elements and, and preserve certain elements, we're going to do the same idea here except we're going to apply it in an animation program. Okay, so here's our photo. And so what we're going to do now is create a, we're going to create a duplicate of it. I always like to duplicate the original photo. And then we'll just leave the duplication or the original alone. So I'm going to right click on it, duplicate the layer, and then just leave the background or the original layer alone. So on this background copy, we're going to turn this into a, kind of a layer mask, so to speak. And what we're going to do is we're going to make this a grayscale image. So I'm going to go up to Image, um, Adjustments, Hue Saturation, kind of like we did before with the buildings. It's kind of the same idea here. So let's take out the saturation and maybe adjust the lightness a little bit. Okay, that looks good. Click OK. And then let's go ahead and do again the brightness and contrast just to emphasize the differences between the layers that I'm going to keep. That's pretty good right there. So I'm going to click OK. And so the next thing I'm going to do now is draw out the area that I want to keep. Um, and so again, the probably the easiest way to do this would be to use my polygonal lasso tool. So again, I'm going to go in here, zoom in greatly, and um, we're going to have to get somewhat detailed around this side of the building. So I'll start there with the hard part. Again, grab my polygonal lasso tool and we're going to, um, actually let's start over here. And we're just going to, we don't have to get real deep, we're real precise down here. I don't think we're going to need to use that, but just in case, let's go ahead and, and do some of that. And we're just going to go up right around this water tower here. And so again, while I'm doing this, I, I want to take this time to tell you guys, 
whatever video footage you use, make sure you use footage that's stationary. Um, you really, really want to have um, a steady camera, and that makes this a lot easier when you're, you know, dealing with live video footage or film or. Okay, then we'll just go around. Well, let's see. We can do this. And just go up here to the top. So, and again, if you film something with a background that has pretty straight lines, I think you'll find that's a lot easier to deal with sometimes. Just take your time. That's the key thing, you guys, is to just make sure you take your time. And again, I'm not including, maybe I should include the gate, but I'm not at this point. Well, let's just do it without it. We'll, we'll make it work. And again, you don't have to save, preserve everything. You just have to preserve what you want to show up um, or what you want to block your object, I should say. Let's see what's up there. Um... I think I can get away with going just straight off, straight over this way, not worrying about the railing. Okay, and then we're going to go here, up to here maybe. There we go. And just keep moving your mouse and it'll, it'll adjust with you. Okay. I think the key too is to take your time. I think I said that previously uh, when we were working on the buildings. But if you just take your time, you'll be uh, doing okay because you have to kind of do this all in one shot. So another thing that's interesting here is I think, I believe I can go outside the border here. Yeah, and then I can just go straight down. Um Let's see, we have to join, huh, in some way. So I'm just going to go all the way down to the bottom. Yeah, and then go all the way across now. So this is kind of neat. This is easy and convenient. Go all the way around here. I'm going to go up here. And then finally, make sure these line, this line connects all the way around. And that's the area we're going to preserve. So again, I want to change my foreground to white. I'm going to use my brush tool and we're just going to fill in that area that we're going to preserve for our track mat. Okay, so we're going, here we go. And this should work out just perfectly with our uh, other video clip. So, we'll just fill that all in again. since you have this all selected you won't go outside of the selection border that's why i suggest that you do it this way that way once you join all the lines together with your one of your like lasso tools then it makes it a lot easier to just kind of select the areas that you want to color in this is just this won't even show up over here but actually i think it will because i went outside the border yeah so just fill all the area in that you need with white. Okay, and that looks good. And then once that's done, of course, you know, you can now switch over your foreground color to black. And with your selection still going, choose select inverse. And now color all this in as black. And what that'll do is mask out this area for your other objects to show up. Okay. And I noticed there I didn't include the railing, so I have to be careful about that, how the object moves through the scene. Um, we'll see if that how that deals with the railing here. So so the everything black that's going to be masked out, everything white that's going to be preserved. And we're in business. So that looks pretty good there. So I'm going to zoom out. 
Oh, that's perfect. Control D to deselect it. And now what I'm going to do is save this so I don't lose it. We'll call this demo uh, track mat mask. Photoshop file going in 10, of course. Click Save. OK. And now let's export this out as, of course, as a, um, well, a JPEG should work. So let's do a quick export as a JPEG. We'll try it anyway, and we'll call this uh, demo track mat mask. And again, don't attach anything else. And let, J let it be a JPEG there. We'll go ahead and save that. And let's see if it's in there. There it is. Okay, so we're good there. So the next step now in the final parts of this assignment, we'll apply the uh, track mat and we'll uh, make an object maybe appear coming from behind the water tower and move into the scene and maybe add a shadow to it as well. Okay, so once you have your assets done, you know, you have your um, track mat that you created from your map photo, you have your skyscrapers, you have your spacecraft, or whatever it is you're going to use. Now we can go into After Effects here. So I set up a file. Um, again, it should be 640 by 480, 15 frames a second, and finally 12 second duration. All right, and so now what we're going to do is we have our video in here, and Again, I've made this to be about 12 seconds. 10 seconds is the minimum, but I met, I left it 12 so you could see the bird flying across. I know it's very small here, but there's a, if you watch the water tower, you can see a little object moving across it from left to right. I wanted to leave that in there just to show you that uh, it's still all part of a video and that we're, we're still using mostly, um, we're still using all video to do this, really except for our objects that we created. So to make this happen, what we're going to do is we're going to make a spaceship come from behind the water tower while still retaining all of the um, scenery around it. Okay, so here's how we're going to do it. We're, first thing we're going to do is bring in our track mat right here. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to drop this into my uh, video here. Okay, so once we drop our track mat in, that's going to be on the top. So your track mat photo, your JPEG, will be on the top layer. Under Just underneath it will be the video. And again, how this works is the track mat will keep the water tower in the video beneath it while masking out everything else. How do we make that happen? Well, we go down to our video underneath it, and we're going to... Uh, make sure that track match showing up here in your timeline down here. If it's not, you can click toggle switches and modes down here until you can see where it says track mat. So on the track mat video, just above the JPEG, you're going to go to where it says track mat here. Instead of no mat, you're going to select the JPEG just above it. Okay, so now that I've done that, notice there that the track mat is preserving the uh, part of the picture above it while still showing the video or, or sorry while keying out the video around it so if we turn the eyeball on the, on the track mat notice there now we just have a black and white image so make sure that stays off and here's how we bring the video back around this we can duplicate this video right here that we just had on our timeline so we're just going to duplicate it control plus D and then when we go down to this duplicate video beneath these two, we just turn off the track mat. So just grab where it says track mat again here. Instead of a JPEG, just say no mat. And notice there, now our scenery is back. So if I hit play here, you'll see the bird is still going through here. 
Okay, looks normal, right? So we have our track map photo on the top. We have our video underneath while assigning it to the track map JPEG. And un right here, again, we want to make sure that Luma Mat is selected. Okay, so when you do assign your track mat, if it shows an alpha mat, nothing's going to really happen, right? So make sure that this, where it says alpha mat selected, make sure that is a Luma mat, okay? All right, so now that we've got our video down here, um, now here's where the magic happens, okay? We're going to bring our spacecraft in here. Drop that in. And basically, now the spacecraft is in, in front, on top, so it's in front of everything. What we want to do is move the object between the two video tracks, okay? So here's our JPEG, and then here's our two video tracks on the bottom. So our, our spacecraft is going to go be in between those two. And now you can see now it's behind the water tower, but yet still showing up in the video, right? Okay, so let's make this smaller first of all. And again, we can apply a filter to it. I like the glass filter, so I'm going to grab that. And that's under Stylize in Effects and Presets. You know, feel free to try others. And again, the one I really bonded with so far is glass, but it might be different for you. Let's see what glass does. Let's drop it into Spaceship. And notice there, glass has several properties here. We can change the shape here. It looks good, kind of like it is now, but um, you can also alter it a little bit if you want. Um, that's kind of interesting right there. That looks a little more menacing, but you have also have that shape showing up down below. But look at this. Look what happens when you start making these adjustments. You start to get something that looks very, very uh, science fiction-ish. Um, so, um, yeah, play around with those things. Again, you also have surface areas that you can play with. You can soften it. Again, you can mess with the height. I kind of liked where it was, so I don't want to change it too much. Um, displacement can always be interesting too. Um, but you want to be careful, you can overdo it also, I guess. So I think that's about as good as I could get it, the way I liked it. And uh, yeah, so you can have a lot of fun with that shading here. You can play with the diffusion. You can darken it if you want it to blend in a little better with your uh, surroundings. So I highly suggest trying effects on your object if you don't think it quite is giving you what you want here. And now we can have this thing uh, come out, you know, from here. While at the same time, the bird is flying across the water tower. It's very small, but it's right here. You can kind of see it there. Okay, and that's the basic idea on how you... Uh, create your uh, track mat here. So again, you bring your uh, initial video clip in here and get that set up. You put your track mat JPEG on the top. Um, you also want to duplicate this video and then turn off your track mat. So again, so it's uh, the JPEG on top, your video with your Luma track mat, your object, and then your video here. Now, if you want to bring in more objects, you can. You can just, like, for example, the buildings that I created. We can drop those in. And again, those will, same thing, they'll go between the two video tracks. So again, and you probably want to put that behind the spacecraft or underneath the spacecraft. So it kind of create the illusion that you're in an urban environment here, too. You know, something like that. So when your um, spacecraft comes out, you can see he's kind of in a more of an urban environment. Okay. Um, and so then, so now the next thing you probably want to do is do your animation. Okay, so you can come in here 
And let's go do for our spaceship here, we'll do a position transform. Okay, so we're going to keyframe our position here. So this is going to be going along here. And as the bird comes out about right there, maybe is where we'll have this thing uh, start to appear. So I'm going to take this first keyframe, copy, control C, and then make sure your uh, scrub keys where you want it to go, control V. Okay, so from here to five seconds, we're going to stay in that position. Then it's going to come out about right here. So this will slowly uh, or come up here maybe to about right there. And maybe we'll have this thing hover a little bit. Hover a little bit more right there. come up there and then here maybe once more down to about here Oops, I'm not sure what's happening there and then by there it'll fly off the screen okay so there you go so here you can kind of see everything's fine and peaceful then we've got this menacing spaceship wandering around looking at things and then flying off so that's kind of the basic idea again you want to uh, have your track map photo on the top your video underneath while assigning the track mat here to that photo and then making sure that luma is selected as your bat instead of alpha here then your objects go in between and then finally uh, another copy of your track map video down here with no mat selected and you'll have an easy time doing this.